Working hard is not enough anymore. Smart and tech skills are now required to succeed. But being successful in tech was not as easy as you thought. This battle is against yourself, the system, and everyone else. Your boss doesn't want to pay you. Your brain is resisting the training. AI wants to replace you. YouTube pitches you 10 new technologies every day. Recruiters won't give you a chance. Your mind is afraid and wants to quit. But the reward is amazing. The tech world is the new American dream. But I won't sell you dreams, free courses, or be politically correct. I'll give you tools to fight these enemies like many have successfully done. This podcast is called Code Set You Free, and my name is Alejandro. Let's begin. In the next 40 minutes, you'll hear about Leonardo Sequani. Leo is currently in the process of breaking into tech. I want you to witness and feel how it feels to be on the right track. Because he's not there yet, but he's definitely on the right track. You will hear about failures, like when Leo quit university and didn't know what to do. He was introduced to code in the worst possible way, using the worst possible language, in the worst possible learning environment. He hated it back then. He tried using Udemy, and it didn't work. In our discussion, one of the best takeaways was how in the past, he learned a process to learn and a process to troubleshoot that shaped him in a way that he was ready to start learning to code again. He developed logical thinking, reading skills, following instructions, Googling skills and research without knowing that these skills were very useful for code. Another takeaway is Leo's support system. Leo's family and partner are not his enemy. I want to thank Leo's partner for being so supportive. Leo's creativity keeps him alive and moving because he usually loses motivation when something gets very difficult. But in this case, in the case of code, he knew his weaknesses and he decided to keep trying. Leo quit his job the moment he got accepted into the bootcamp. That is a big thing. He had enough savings and support from his partner to be able to do so. I want you to analyze during our conversation all the things that are making Leo so successful right now. He's not successful in the way that he is already a coder, being paid and having a salary and everything. But you will see how in the past, everything he did led him to a particular place. And now everything he has been doing for the past few months is leading him to an amazing position. So I want you to keep your mind open. Try and absorb everything that Leo is doing great. And hopefully, this episode will help you to become successful in the world of tech. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the next episode of Code Sets You Free. Here we have with me Leonardo Sequani here with us. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yes, you did. How are you, man? I'm doing good. I uh, just uh, have today's President's Day, so um, we got a day to not have to go in and actually be able to like catch up on some things. So I've been catching up and just more and more practice, which is the name of the game, and uh, just that's kind of been my life, but it's uh, I'm not complaining. No, and that reminds me to thank you again for coming because I know that you're in the middle of, of a boot camp and it's taking you a lot of time and thank God we have President Day so that we could record this. Yeah, that, that was the that's the reason why I'm here. I was just like, oh, it's a one day and you had an opening. So um, I'm glad it's working out. Yeah, I mean, obviously I had the opening on, on President's Day. So I, <laughs> I just talked to my wife and said, listen, uh, let's just. I need to. I need to record this. is a, This is an amazing story that I want to put the, out there. And if President Day is the day when, I guess my my wife and and little girl have to wait to mm. another holiday. Mm. But yeah, your story is great, man. I I was I was reviewing it, and I think you're gonna you're gonna give a lot of great the tools to people listening, and and I'm really excited to have you and and have your story here in the in the podcast. So thank you for coming. My pleasure. So you wanna you wanna intro, uh, start by telling us like your your age and then uh, the, how was the beginning of your of your let's say technology journey. Um. So my name is obviously uh, my name is people call me Leo. I pretty much everyone but my mother calls me Leonardo. Um. But uh, I've pretty much my uh, whole life moved. I was born in the DR and in the Dominican Republic moved here when I was eight and I've kind of always just like had different ambitions, like always got interested in like whether it was a flight simulator when I was younger. And then I was playing with the flight simulator and I was like, wait a minute, 
this gateway i3 is not gonna why is this does it doesn't look as good as those youtube videos why doesn't it look as nice as those and then i realized that computers is like this whole world like oh there's a graphics card there's like processors that i can put into here and just like plug it in and as like i evolutionized from wanting to be a pilot i ended up being like in uh, high school and this is when gaming really got popular at the time um and like gaming competitions in our school had this um uh what's it called they had this like gaming uh almost tournament and my school bought like 10 computers components and they wanted a computer club to kind of learn how to put them together um and i first started with like a 19 like 90 i don't even know what type of computer i couldn't even tell you what the technology was but really old computer and my professor was kind of or my teacher at the time was like just tear it apart i don't care if you break it it's already broken just learn what's what how to pull and do all that and then probably like the sixth or seventh of those gaming computers like i was building and i learned how to build um and then over time like i was just like well i'm in high school i need kind of a job i want to make some money so that kind of rolled me into like what's natural which was just kind of like hardware repair um and when i was doing like pc hardware repair i started working for this mom and pop shop and they were apple certified so i was like pretty uh early getting integrated with systems like part counts and kind of just like dealing with all these things but they kind of had me do the basics like in 2013 it was just like take the batteries out, take the batteries out. And then I was like, all right, you can install. So it was a lot of repetition, but really fast and really quickly. Like I actually learned a lot um, to the point where like, I wanted to like work for something a little bit more known. Um, so I went to Geek Squad when I was 17. And like, I've always had this like theory. Um, it's almost like this gorilla interview where like I walk in in a like, nice suit tie, resume and say hey my name is da 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 this and that so my dad like since i've been 16 my dad's like do that do that so like i went to geek squad in a whole suit tie everything like hey here's my resume and they're like hey you're not old enough but like a year later i came back um and then i started with best buy and i started there and um i think that like once you're in there and kind of once you learn what it's all about um i think it's like really fundamental and like good knowledge i think it's like a good base to like go but i don't think it's something that you should like get too comfortable in i think it's like more hey get the knowledge that the place has to offer and move forward um so that's kind of how i got into technology i kind of uh and now i'm 23 years old so like i've pretty much been with best buy on and off um like five years but like probably working like three of those and I've like learned a lot. And I think that like one of the main things that like really was, was that like, yeah, like just what you saw me do here. It's like, Hey, there's an HDMI or there's a problem I'm having with this podcast. It's pretty, you go down the checklist. It's like, Hey, well, if it's not this, it's that, if it's not this, then it's that, well, Hey, let me see this. It could just be this. Well, let me just try that. And at the end of the day, you learn that like this knowledge and this skill isn't at least in my opinion, like too hard or like, it's pretty easy to come by at least at a consumer level. Once you get to like an enterprise level IT, that's a whole other beast in its, uh, in its own world. And at least on the consumer level, once you kind of get the hang, it's like, Hey, most people are coming in with viruses that someone like 1-800 windows came in. So like, it's kind of repetitive. You're kind of using the same tools, the same things. And yeah, it's kind of like being, I hate to say it, but being kind of like, the strongest guy in like the in whatever room like it's just like you you don't really feel like the knowledge you have is like impressive like to me like i never walked around like hey like i can do this or like i can look at a problem and be like damn i could do this better or like look at an app and be like wait a minute why why don't they just show me the hours when i tell siri like that would be so much nicer and it's just not that hard to just show me the hours when I asked Siri, hey, when is this open or closed? So like, I think that just now, like even just starting a little bit, like even just two, three weeks in, like the knowledge that I have, it's kind of like, I look at things so much differently now. Um, and it's like kind of something I have a little bit more pride in doing. So like, I think that is like, like the reasons, there's a lot of things that led up to me, like leaving Best Buy and like just saying, screw it, I gotta do what I gotta do. Um, but for like overall, that's kind of been my journey. Like if I can uh, wrap it up. Yeah, I worked at a like burger shop once in a while. But like overall with technology, that's kind of how my journey has kind of been and kind of how the progression of what I've known and where I've been, to be completely honest. No, it sounds like a 
like a thorough background and I love that <laughs> you had all these opportunities to get into into a hardware. Like you were like a hardware guy, I guess, right? Um if I actually turn my camera, I have like a microscope solder gun uh hot air like i also was doing like it got to a point where i did my own thing and did like uh like water repairs like touch ic's and different things like on iphone boards and things like that um i probably have like 10 macbooks that i could be fixing um but, but like i said it's like one of those things that i it was i went on like the the knowledge that i learned that that was like through a course so like i've always had the belief in like online learning and like learning not through a conventional like method or style that like is like hey this is the way and it's crazy because it's like i've found that like hey i've developed my own learning style and i've made it adaptable to like whatever i'm right. i'm like looking right. for so it's like so that's the thing i've been doing hardware for pretty much my whole life and it sucks because most of the cool tools that you can do, like really like a lot of where the finances and like uh, this is like data recovery. Like if you can pull data from places where like generally like most people can't, or you can make a software that looks data at a different way, people will pay infinite amount of money for like some data. So like I always ran into like problems where I'm like, oh, I need to like use Linux for something or, oh, I need to use this for something. And like, I would always be like, well, this is kind of where my wits end so i think that's uh, things where i was learning and i found out that like hey a lot of this is software even looking at it at a higher level it's understanding how networks and software and all these things work but it all nothing nowadays is really hardware if a computer breaks in a office they just get a new one like they don't really fix it and it's not really the business it's not the market the market is hey get it in here uh, deploy a package to the computer, image the computer, the computer is ready to go, start working. That's that's how IT is, um, which is all, in my opinion, or how I saw it back then, like software related. Um, right. And that's why I kind of got, I guess, a little bit demotivated on the hardware um, avenue of things. Right. No, but I guess you, uh, when you were giving me your background, I, I was hearing how you said like, um, it's repetitive and that at some point you thought um, it was something that other people could just uh, get that knowledge because you think like you heard like a certain uh, cap, right? Yeah, and, uh, and yeah, yeah. like I said, it's like you're pretty much doing like either virus removals or you're transferring data from one computer to another. And right. it's just you're doing the same thing. It's not really like, yeah, it could be a little different. Like someone's data could be on the desktop instead of the documents folder. But like, overall, it's not like you're doing this high level thinking. It's right. almost like you, I, I was more physically tired at the end of the day than I was like mentally. Right. And now when I'm at boot camp, I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to use my brain. Like, don't ask me what to eat for dinner. Just make a choice. I don't care. Right. Like I, like my brain, my brain is, and not in a bad way, but it's like, I need to preserve my brain juices, as I call them. So like, I, I don't like, I my, I feel more mentally exhausted, which is so much more rewarding um, at the end of the day. Cause you actually feel like you're like growing and learning as like a human, um, which I really like. But, um, but when you, uh, when you were, when you started to learn the hardware part and all of those things, you didn't feel any of that mental, mental tiredness because you were learning a new skill or no? Um, no. And I guess that a lot of it had to do with there was a certain aspect of repetitiveness, like the same thing. It's like the practice, but because it was new and you were learning, like this is a processor, this is RAM. And when you're learning, yeah, it's fun and it's awesome. And it's great because you're like, I'm learning all these cool things. But then when you're diagnosing a computer with no power, it can be like three things. It could be the motherboard, the power supply, or the RAM. Right. And like, it's, it's at the end of the day, you realize that once you get really good at this, you hone in and it's, you can almost yeah, but do th it. Think about it. How, how long it took you to be good at those uh, troubleshootings or know how long it took you, because maybe you didn't do it like in an intensive way, like you're doing with code now. Maybe you did it through the years. Till I got comfortable, I would say, I, I would say probably like three, four years, but that was just like doing work and kind of, like it's the same thing and that's why i'm not really like like and this has reminded me of that like this journey has kind of like reminded me of things like that that it's like hey 
HTML was like hard like today. And then you like just woke up this morning and you did it again. And it was just a little bit easier. And then like you do it for the whole week. And then you're like, wait a minute. Like, why, why was I getting confused? Like it really wasn't making sense, but you realize that right. it's a repetitiveness to it. It's a practice to it. And once you get it, but I just think that once you get it, it's, it's ever ending your possibilities, your amount of how complex or how simple you really want to make anything I think is infinite. There's new things coming out. There's old things, there's new methods, there's combinations of things you can do, which I think always keep you sharp. Like me, I've just right. been like, Oh, there's cool like things you'd like to do. And it's like, wow, if I had the knowledge to do that, I'd do it. No, um, man. And the next phase for hardware will not be, and maybe in, in doing a new configuration of a motherboard, stuff like that, maybe the next phase, the next phase will be something like doing a rocket, you know, that's, that's still hardware and it still uses plenty of software. So it's and like a big jump. It, and that's, and I think that's where I've, at least with hardware, I've, I, when I've like went to school too, and that's like a whole other thing. Um, but when I went to school for um, electrical engineering, that's kind of been my love, like my love of space always just loved um and really it came with like the love of like spacex specifically where it was just like a rocket landing back like from outer to like coming back seeing mm -hmm. that like when i was 17 was like holy crap like i don't even know how that starts like that really like showed software i think for the first time like when you really thought of it in a rocket that you were just like wow those legs deployed it found an exact coordinate it balanced itself and it was able to land perfectly and seeing that for the first time was just like, oh, I really want to learn about rockets. Rockets right. are really cool. Um, and then you go to school and then you start learning all the calculus. You start learning all that. And then it kind of just goes to this like slippery slope of like, I don't know. I just, I, it wasn't for me, like all the math. I got through like Calc 3, um, Physics 2. But then when I realized that like the next class was like the sign of AM and FM radio waves. I was just like, yeah, that's not for me. Like, I thought I just had to get to this checkpoint of like, you know, the math, you're good at the math and then that's it. But then you realize that every class you take throughout your whole engineering journey is going to be some yeah. level of that math that you learned. No. And you know, um, what's crazy is that rockets use radio waves to communicate, but it's like, I don't need to be an expert on every single thing there is in life or in history about radio waves to be able to start communicating a rocket, you know, like, uh, why don't you focus on, on the fun part, on the, on the practical part. And I, I, I don't know why I think that like school has maybe made like this, um, I don't know, like maybe subconsciously we've kind of grown up with this idea that like, Hey, you can't look at your notes. Hey, you can't go online and like, look something up. Hey, you have to know everything off the top of your brain, like this, like this, like this, or if not, you're going to fail a test. And I think this journey, it's that we referred to it as like imposter syndrome in the first day of class. Um, but it was kind of in this journey, I found that like, even my like mentor or like, I hate to call him a professor, but my, what would be my professor, it's cool to see him just like, oh, I'm not sure. Let me look it up. And it's like, cool. It's not like, oh, you don't know something. And it's like, there's no way you can know everything. Like it's impossible that Absolutely. you can know everything off the top of your head. Um, so I think that seeing that and like, uh, realizing that you don't have to know everything made this like already like first day through the door was just like okay like you're not going to expect me to be like a complete like master of this yeah. at this point you want to give me what i need to know and that's exactly what i do in like technology or i did like in geek squad it was like you're a better googler than everyone else in the building at the end of the day um it was i like hey what's wrong with this computer why is this drive or not hey let me look up the model number let me see if anyone's had a normal problem hey let me see if these drivers are available here like let me look and like it's the same thing but like you just have to know that hey i know what these parts are i know that this is a motherboard i know that this is this and as long as you know how these come together what things are doing and you don't have to know like hey what's the wire composed of what's the uh the polarization of the copper inside of the board like absolutely it, yeah if you don't have to know that then it's just like hey why why no like and i've learned that like hey and sometimes people like me it helps my learning a little bit more when i'm like you know what this foreign loop not doing it as almost like a certain type of loop like using i initializing i but doing it this other way 
I, I almost have to like push myself and kind of be like, it doesn't make sense, but I kind of have to keep seeing it happen and seeing it happen and kind of just trusting that it does what it does. You don't have to understand why this loop iterates something this way. You just have to understand what a for loop does, what iterations do, and then these higher method functions will take care of the rest. Right. And, oh, and, and for... it's also about knowing in which, in which part of the, of helping or building you are. Like if you are in the, maybe you need to know that if you're going to be the one refurbishing the computer. But yes. if, if you're the one in the first, in the front of the war and you're trying to fix issues, like it's okay not to know that many things and being useful and getting paid and understanding things already and being useful in, in society. And then later on, as you grow, maybe you can start learning more stuff, but it's not like I want to be an expert from day one. It's impossible. It is impossible. And Because that's... this brings me to another thing that it's when you were talking about the, how it gets, it gets repetitive to do hard work. Uh, maybe this is something that you haven't, you haven't thought about it like this, but I am bored. I, and it gets repetitive to me to debug front end and back end issues. You know, for me, it's just when I saw you fixing your mic before we started the podcast, I was, that was me fixing a web application, you know? So I was basically, okay, let's open the inspector. Okay. Let's open, let's, let's see if the network is, is a network problem or maybe see if it's an HTML interpretation issue or no, maybe it's JavaScript that it's not doing, like I do know the step by memory and I'm bored. And I tell the students this, all the time, like you have to do it until you get bored. It's better to be very, very, very good at something simple. And then later on, you can get deep in, in that knowledge, you know, and yeah. And I mean, I was, yeah, because I was, and I was talking to actually my partner about this yesterday, because she was like, oh, I want to do this data science. I'm going to buy this book to like learn Python and like do data science with it for marketing and all that. And I'm like, hey, like just a word to the wise. I really think that like, just really understanding Python and just really understanding the pure basics of it, understanding just how the loops work, how the arrays work, and just getting really good at that. I think that that is going to be so much better for you and your learning experience. Um, and like, she kind of got a little upset because she was like, well, no, I've done Python and this. And I'm like, listen, like, this is a practice thing. Like, if you're not constantly doing it and on it, like, it kind of just goes out. So like, I think that that's another thing that it's like, Hey, you have a lot of practice. And if you constantly are doing something, it's like, like today I'm doing the JavaScript exercise and I'm like, Oh, I got this. Like, this is good, but it's because it's fresh on my mind. And if I probably got some HTML to do right now, I'd probably be like, Oh, I don't know if I do as good as I would, right. but now I know what references, like I know exactly what I can do and can't do with bootstrap or without bootstrap or things like that. So it's a, it's a really like, like I said, it's been like a really good journey that I've just been like, wow, like just get good at the simple things. Like if you get good at right. the simple things, everything else will kind of just come. But, but at the same time, you have to keep, you have to take like so many things that you have to learn to be able to get a job. Right. So how do you, how do you, Uh, work around the problem I'm having to be very good at simple things but at the same time I have to in the interview they may ask me to build a React application with front end and back end you know? so, so how do you do that in short, such a short amount of time like what are your, your tips for that how are you doing right now because you're in the middle of it well me well I'll tell you this um, my, prof my professor George um, he like he is like top notch like he is really really good at what he does um to the point that it's i am constantly humbled every day in class and like in the nicest way like when you say oh it's boring open the inspector or hey read the terminal and just read the error and just tell you what the error do and do it it's insane to see him just do the same thing it's like oh you have all right we'll open the inspector well go well that's your problem right there and it's to me it's like it took me 20 minutes and i couldn't figure that out and he just boom, came by and figured it out like that. So that's been like overall a tough thing where it's like, I've really had to focus on the simple and the basics because more times than not, that's what's catching me. And I hate when he just comes and he's just like, you didn't indent correctly or you didn't close the tag correctly or you didn't put a period between this or that or you didn't initialize a variable. And those things have really just caused me because I'm like, I can think I've done calc. I can think when you tell me like a complex thing, 
I can break it down and I can say this needs this, this needs that, this needs that. But I'm almost like so quick with it that I'll glaze over the fast things. And I just know that as long as the basics are good, I can, or I have a good reference, a solid reference that I can kind of like, well, I know that if we need this, I'm probably going to need that. If I'm going to need A, I'm going to need B. So like kind of having that. And I've always had the issue where like I get too into things and then I'm like, "Ah, I don't like this. Instead of like, Hey, break something down and figure out what you can. And then when you figure that out, then we figure out the next thing. And then we kind of put it together. I haven't gotten to the interview part of things yet. So I wish I could tell you more like, hey, this is what I would do. Maybe right now I listen to myself in two weeks and I'm like, oh, I sound like a crazy man. Um, But in this moment right now, I'm kind of just like, hey, I think that I need to in interviews. Don't get nervous. Like you're confident in just the basics. You know this. And as long as you know this, think and try to like have practice and practice and practice right. and practice get bored imagine getting bored in an interview that's that's perfect that's what that's you want, a, right? <laughs> that's not a bad <laughs> right um but um uh, also tell me like i do remember when i was uh reviewing the notes before the episode uh you were telling me about like joining the university and then uh you didn't like how much like it wasn't applied it was more like theoretical stuff and let's get to the AM, FM and all that stuff. But then you decided to go back to go back to Fort Lauderdale home and like reassess, yeah. right? Tell me a little bit about yeah. that. Yeah. So um, in that period um, during COVID, uh, I came back and I was time to kind of start school. And I went to um, first year, I went to this community college called Valencia over in Orlando. Um, and I just moved up there because my friend, we got an apartment um, and it was good. And we were kind of uh, going through it and I was going through the classes and I was going through the simple maths. Um, in high school, I really never like took anything seriously because like side thing, I kind of wanted to like go to the Navy and like do all that. So I never like I never really cared about my grade. So I had to start at the community college. And, and you um, didn't have any problems learning either. I didn't know. I didn't have, I didn't have any problems learning. Like my issue has always been like, I do something until like, I'm, I don't want to say I'm good and I'm like bored at it, but I'll do something until one, I realize it's like 500 times harder than what I expect it to be. And then I'm like, ah, I don't want to do that. So like, if I would say like my character flaw, it's that, but like knowing my character flaw as well, um, has kind of really helped me at least within the past like year to like really just push through things. Cause like now I'm looking for it now. I'm like, Hey, if you feel this, don't stop. Like whatever you do, if you feel that feeling, just don't stop. So did you uh, ever feel it where, when learning to code or no. And that's, that's like the craziest part because like my brain almost works off like, um, almost like off vision and off like hope and off like all this. So like, I'll like be doing like a simple thing and I'm like, Oh wait. So like this button, I could eventually like do this crazy thing. And like, that's enough to like keep my brain almost like wanting more and wanting to come more knowing that the more I learn, the cooler stuff I'm going to be able to do like, and the more like advanced projects and the more like, Hey, my friends all love like sports gambling. If I can be like, Hey, here's a API or something that makes you has my picks or whatever, da, 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 da. Like I've always thought that to be like super cool. If I have like knowledge that like, I could be like, Oh no, dude, like, let me help you make a dashboard for your life or something like that. Or like any, anything, like, I think that's just so cool, but like, I need to learn it. And I've learned that like, dude, it, 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 this works off HTML. This works off this. If I don't know this, there's no way I'm going to get over there. And I think that one of the hardest things has been kind of just like staying put and be like, hey, get good at this. Like get good. Don't get confused. Don't go look at other knowledges, projects and all that. But ever since I've started like my whole like Instagram algorithm reels and all that, it's just coding projects or like this or that. And it's just like, I'm like, oh my God, you can do that. Oh yeah, you could do that. Like that's crazy. And then I've always liked these YouTube channels that have like, these guys that just like are like one man, like hardware and software guys that can like code a like 10,000 piece white puzzle. Like, and it's insane how, like, I've just always watched this before. And I'm like, that's so cool. Um, and I've always just appreciated like smart, like it's like, yeah. But why, everyone... why, why did you decide to do the bootcamp instead of trying on your own, the learning, learning code part? So, um, 
as I went through school, um, I pretty much got to a point where I was going to do electrical engineering and I said, I'm not doing that. And I saw that the same prerequisites for that were the same ones as software development or as computer science. Okay. So I went over to computer science and because in my engineering prerequisites, I took a class called intro to engineering and it had two like, like, pro like things that like required coding and it was like in math blocks or something like that or code like something like that it was like some weird like other code language and we did it for a little bit and then like the next semester it was like okay well you're into your uh degree cool intro or hey this is what was the name of the class the class was oh c it was just um introduction to c or it was c programming that's all it was um not even intro it was c programming because the original prerequisite is intro to c programming but because i got messed up and locked in this and like messed up in the system one of my other prerequisites satisfied that so like i got into this class and i chose an accelerated six-week class and keep in mind like i don't even know like Right. HTML. You didn't do the introduction. Nothing. No, I don't know. Since so, I realized this, and I was just like, "Oh my god!" And right away, like this wasn't something that you could just go Absolutely. on Mathway or go and, do and like C, no. Man, C is <laughs> one of the toughest. You know, C C is one of the toughest language. I would never recommend anyone to learn C first. But we started with C. So we started with C, and right away, I was like, "Holy crap!" And then I go on like, uh, what's it called on um, Udemy or the one, one of those things. And I pretty much go on there and I'm like, all right, what's the closest thing that I can get to a coding boot camp with Udemy? Like, give me a course that you guys can put all together so I can buy all these courses. And it's pretty much the same as a boot camp. So I started with that and I was just like, well, this starts with HTML, CSS. So then I had to skip to the C part. And basically I'm like probably up like, two nights like almost like fall like pretty much it was unproductive like you're basically falling asleep in and out just energy drink coffee energy drink to like learn c before like you get to class so then i right. get there and then it's like hey your first project is like code a banking menu that like does these things and i'm just like right. I, I don't say so that alone and keep in mind at this point i had a 3.9 gpa in school it wasn't like i i couldn't and i was just everything i was dedicated all these things and I ended up just kind of like, dude, I can't do this. And very quietly, like I kind of shut down and I like kind of stopped turning in assignments, kind of stopped, mm. like, you know, and then like school, I just kind of let it go. Like, honestly, like I let my GPA slide. I let it kind of all go down. Um, and that was kind of a point where like everything I just say was kind of like this like life lie I was living. And I was just like, I kind of didn't tell my mom, didn't tell my girlfriend, didn't tell anyone. And I kind of went through that period of uh, live, having to be like, yeah, I'm going to class and I'm learning this. And like, at least my girlfriend and my parents know that when I'm learning something, like I don't shut up about it. Like, I'm like, hey, I learned this, I learned this, I learned this. And then they're like, yeah, you're not like talking about it much and all that. So like December comes around and I decided to come forward and be like, yeah, I haven't been in school for the past like six months. Oh, and God. yeah, yeah. And then my girlfriend and me, it was just like this whole thing. But it was like, honestly, like, in a in a good way like it was i came to her and i was like hey like i kind of just have something i've kind of been it's not me but i just i failed and i'm kind of ashamed about it so like i it kind of like impacted me so i tried it again um going through it and it was the same thing i picked up on c and i was like this doesn't make sense i'm doing it purely like online as well at this point because i had to move back to fort lauderdale but still stay like enrolled mm -hmm. um so I did it kind of full time and it was just like, I had, then I had kind of had to like pick up work, try to learn C and do all these things. And I was just like, dude, it's not happening. And that's where I'm like, I maybe want to give my own like hardware shop, like a chance, like right. geek squad didn't really have like this scalability of like, Oh, I'm going to get promoted and promoted and promoted. It's like, I was like the most promoted you could possibly be in the store. And like my pay, like I could have made like an extra like 20 cents. Like that was my max pay I could have possibly made. So I kind of got to a point where I was just like, something has to change. Every day I would come home and I would just be negative. I'd be in a bad mood, like every day, every day, every day. So um, I think at work, and this is funny, like I was just at work one day and my boss kind of comes in and like, I just had a beanie and I was in the back and no one sees me. And I'm 
I hate to say it, but I'm, or I don't hate to say it, but I'm like one of the better employees, like no problems at all. And I'm kind of just in the back, minding my own business, have my beanie on and I usually wear it no problem. And like, I think she decided to kind of like make an example. So like, she kind of said like, Hey, like take that beanie. Like, and it was something that like, so petty, like petty of me. Like she was like, Hey, take that beanie off. And I was just like, okay, like you understaff me. You don't give me the hour. You don't give me all these things, but okay, fine. I'll take the beanie off. So I took the beanie off. I went home that day and then I just go on Google, go on Google. And I'm like, okay, like I knew that when I dropped out of school, like I need structure. One of the things that I failed in was that I tried going online. I tried not being like humble and being honest with what I know. And I don't know. I got to go somewhere where like, I don't know anything where I just know the base and I don't, I have to learn everything from scratch and someone auditing that like I'm actually learning this and that I'm doing this and in a way that it's like modern and not like, hey, here's your test. Here's your exam. Here's a project. Here's exercise right. one through 100. So we kind of like I kind of got to that point and I stumbled across a couple because I wanted to go in person. So like really the way I ended up in four geeks was because of the in-person class because I looked kind of everywhere and I texted the number that like I pretty much found and I was like hey this this looks promising I texted a couple I, I I think it's like iron code or something like that um and I got the information back but I liked that I was able to see like the course material and like right away like when I texted it was like hey here's the material this is what you're going to be learning it's pretty transparent and I kind of um my girlfriend who owns a uh, social media or not a she owns like a media company and like a marketing agency mm -hmm. so she right now pays developers and she's kind of looking and she's like dude if you could learn all that or like have a really good understanding of that in like 12 weeks that'd be very very impressive and me too I was just like dude if I like dedicate three months to this and like I actually like have a good knowledge of that that looks like a pretty good bargain to me. And I know that just based off like the short list of opportunities that like, it's, it's a no brainer once you get a job. Um, because like, I see what people do like at Best Buy and things and I'm like, oh, wow. Like those people get paid a certain amount. So like, I can only imagine what people with this little bit better of like a knowledge or less, not even better, but like less attained knowledge, um, could do. So yeah, I think that like, I've, I really got to a point where, I was like, I got in and then it was just kind of a decision I made. I kind of like, it, it was like a two week decision. I literally made it. And I was and just your like, family, was your family involved in it? Like it's a, it's a third so time my, you try, you try no. now starting, right? Yeah. And the thing is my mom is, a, um, in, in the nicest way, my mom's a true Hispanic. So like she moved over to the United States and she was like, Hey, I want you guys to get college degrees. I brought you guys here to do that. She's very much that. She's even talking about the boot camp after. She's like, hey, if, I know you have all that knowledge, but if you wanted to go and blah, 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 it like, means a lot to her. Um, and I think that I've always been like the little bit of the rebel one in the family. So it really hasn't come too much as like a, as like, a, oh, no, like what the heck? But at first, like when I told my mom I dropped out, we didn't talk for like probably like a month or two months. Um, and I knew that was going to happen. Um, it was only like a matter of time. I just had to break the news. Um, okay. But then after I kind of like told her like, hey, mom, here's my plan. This is what I want to do. Um, there's these solutions, boot camps. And I've heard two people or three people already like talk about boot camps just in my life. that have been like, yeah, dude, I got an AA in school, went to a boot camp. And I do pretty good for myself or someone's like, Hey, I locked myself in a room for a year, learned how to code and I'm doing really good for myself or, Hey, I'm doing. And I was just like, is it really just like that easy? Like, it, like not like you learn how to do it and then you can get in. Like there's Wait. no barrier. It's not that easy. I mean, you, you have to work a lot in the bootcamp. You're making it sound like, like the bootcamp well, is going to be easy. Well, and I, and I, maybe, maybe the way I say the boot camp and the reason maybe I'm referring to it as easy is because it's relative to like what I'm learning, like to like college. Right. Um, and relative to college, it's, I, I'm going to say it's easy in the sense that it's like, I, I feel that like I'm learning. I feel that the objective is to learn. It's not a grade. I'm not going home and going to sleep because like, Hey, I have an A I'm going right. home and I'm going to sleep because I learned how to do something today. Um, I think I think one of the greatest thing the greatest things about your how you approach this is that you were actually expecting to work super hard during the boot camp, you know, and because oh. believe it or not, majority of the people they would say, okay, I'm just gonna do the same, and then they don't put aside the time or or they think it's gonna be easier and stuff. 
Oh, I quit my job the day the day I got the text and said I was approved. I quit my job. Like I literally got the text and I quit my job like within five minutes because I just knew that it wasn't the only way that I was going to succeed. The only way was if I gave it my all, if I made it my one thing. I can't be trying to do everything all at once. It was like, hey, I have savings. Um, I asked kind of my partner and I was like, hey, this is kind of the situation. And she more than anyone, like she wants me to do what like she's just like hey please like please go learn so you can come work for me please go do any of these things and it's like from her perspective it's like she's been like pretty much like one of the main people that has like made me not feel like a crazy man for like quitting my job and for like just kind of going in because she's like dude you're learning really valuable things like trust me like i as someone who hires talent like value what you're learning so like constantly seeing that like now that she's like hey can you just like look at like something real quick and then it's like just being able to like look at like a source code that someone sent her and be like oh that's kind of cool like and just like starting to like be like oh mm -hmm. like i'm i recognize all these things yeah. i know all these things and it's like it's been like really really like for me just an all-in thing where it's like hey it's three months i gotta go in as hard as i can i have to give this my all um, and then that's kind of where been my approach since day one. And everything has kind of just been like, wait, like it's nine to five. Like you're just teach, like, I just have to show up to like class and eight hours. And like, you're just, if I got a problem, you're going to come and answer my question. I don't have to go on Chag upload something. I don't have to go on stack overflow. I don't have to search all of Google. Like it's, it's just like the in-person knowing that there's other people. Like if I'm tired and yawning at three and seeing that the other guy across the corner is yawning at three, I'm like, okay, like we're, we're pushing through it. So like, I've just realized that all these little things throughout my pro like throughout my, like sit throughout my progress has kind of just help that i'm like oh wait like in person it's kind of like cool like i kind of know these people uh even my professor it's like being able to him see me just like sighing at the computer smacking the keys a little bit harder and he's just like all right what's wrong and then he's like look you're doing this this and this and it's humbling because i'm like god oh, it's that simple so learning learning and learning it's just been like i've i've have found it easier because like i've also dealt with c and like i went through all those like little things and like i know like a little right. bit of, of some things i'm not going to say like i'm a master or anything but i know computer logic i've seen familiar with for loops with the rays with things like that but bringing it together and making it something functional and now like actually just sitting and being like i know how to do that like it's not like what like i gotta research this and that so it's so far like it's been like honestly probably one of my better like learning experiences um and it's even how like things are worded in the like program i think a lot like examples that you use or like things that just are trying to be relevant like whether it's like a drop the base like exercise or something like that that it's just like it's something just a little bit different it's just something that it's like it's just unique enough to where like it keeps me interested and it's not the same like do x y and z and all this so it's kind of been a very like i like i'm honestly like shocked um, that it's like worked as well as it has. And it's just kind of like, I always find myself like, dang, I, I guess I know how to do that. Like, and I always kind of find myself saying that. So that's why I'm kind of saying it's slightly on the easier side, but do know that like it's eight hours and I'm right. taking notes and trying really, really hard as well to like succeed and do well in the program. No, and that brings me one and one of the, the last questions, because we want to try to keep always the, the episodes short so that people can uh, hear them and while commuting and stuff. Um, so I am, I am impressed by the level, uh, by your mental state right now. Um, it, it, like the majority of the people that I've spoken with that are in the middle of an intensive coding course like that, or, or that have not yet been able to get hired or stuff like they're, they're burning and they feel, they feel tired and they, they, they are double guessing themselves sometimes and they just finish and they exit the finish line because because they they just decide that there's no other way to go through you know but they're not like super happy while they do it you know so how do, how do you do like what do you think it's the what's making you uh be so so energetic and so excited about it and what would you recommend to people to to do the same um i think that like one of the main things is I, I just, everything I've ever looked at in my life just needs to have like purpose or a reason. Whenever I look at an app, it's like cool to like see that like, oh, this does this. 
And like constantly, like I think at least to me in my own personal, like if you're a software developer and you come up to me, like all of a sudden, like you're just, I'm like, oh my God, you're so cool. And it's because I'm like, you, like you like helped or had a little bit of part in like putting together what we call the internet. Um, and it's all these little things that come together that like my parents is like, my mom's like, ah, can you buy me an airplane ticket? And I'm just like, okay, yeah, yeah, that's easy. And then you realize that like, wait, there's like a whole other level to this where it's like someone putting all the forms and putting all this. So seeing it like all come together, seeing everything as the bigger picture and like kind of seeing myself, like being able to inject myself into kind of that industry where I'm just like, wow, there is like so much. And like, maybe it's something that like, I've always wanted, like in my life that I've always just kind of like ran into, whether it's like code or ran into like commands or what like com windows command, or like, I can't get into the operating system and I can't fix some type of file cause it's corrupted. And that's like the thing where I'm like, I've always been held back by code. Like I've always been held back because I'm just like, what's this gibberish? What's all these like letters. And now it's like, it's making a little bit more sense. It's like, kind of the doctors kind of changing the prescription and you're like, Oh, okay. I kind of see that happening. I kind of see it coming clear. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that seeing that picture every day, get a little more clear, seeing that is what's really pushing me through. Cause now, now that I'm finishing up the front end, I'm just like, well, okay. Now that JavaScript does this, how the heck does it like all look pretty? And does it all look all like that? So then I know that I'm going to get to a roadblock where yes, it's going to be hard. I know. But at the end of the day, that knowledge is kind of what I seek. It's kind of what I want. And it's not like, Hey, Leo, you failed or you didn't fail. It's more of like, Hey, if you didn't take your time after class and study a little bit more, or if you don't like try to maybe understand how you learn a little bit better. And I think that I've just kind of have been within school systems relatively like not so far out. So like my brain has kind of stayed sharp and I've always just been like, I I've just appreciated the art. Like I've almost seen it as an art since the beginning that I've ever like started like coding. And I'm just like, wow, this is when you walk into Best Buy and people are like, Oh, my virus or this, or this isn't working. And it's because they don't have their sound or they they're like, my uh, audio isn't working. And it's because like their sound is like turned off on their computer. Like for every one of those people, there's like a software developer that's like making something very like intuitive and smart to so like you maybe like deal with like these customers and you don't have like the highest view of like humanity, I guess, where you're just like, oh, these problems are like, come on, like, how do you not know what Wi-Fi is? How do you not know what a favorite is? But then I sit next to my professor and he's like, how do you not know what if or this or that? And then it was like very humbling that I was like, oh there is so many more levels to intelligence There's so much deeper that this goes than just where I'm at. So it's kind of helped me just kind of seek it and be like, Hey, I kind of want to be one of those people that like walks around in this industry with the same confidence that I walked around in the other industry that I was in, which is kind of like, I don't want to say a know it all, but I kind of want to walk around like knowing the maximum amount of knowledge I can know about the industry that I'm in. And I think that there's just so much future. And like me, I've always liked like investing banks. I like money, honestly. And it's just like knowing that you can join groups, you can join teams and make special things come together um, right. has always just made me like been like, hey, like this is like eight creators can be in a room and be like, hey, I do this and we're all talking our own language. The possibilities, and, like, yeah. It's so it's so cool to me. And like, that's why I just keep it. I'm like, dude, I'm learning this. Like, I'm really doing this. Like, I'm really, really doing this. So it's a uh, it's cool for me. So that's 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 great. I think. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, um, I'm just having this idea right now, but maybe maybe we'll do it. I, I think I want to do another another episode just to analyze everything you've said, because you, you since you started, you you were you were shooting a lot like you. One thing, uh, another thing, another thing, another thing. And I loved it. I love it. Actually, it's a lot of material. So I do want to, <laughs> if you want to come, that would be nice as well. But it, I do want to like talk about every, all your journey in detail because there's so many things to get from there. Like I, I love it, man. So thank you. Thank you very much for coming in. And maybe we can do another one as well when you finish and when you're getting, a, getting, a, getting interviews and, and interviewing. That would be some something super awesome because I want to get your energy through that phase as well. Uh, that, no, definitely. And uh, like I said, I'm someone that you got to stop talking. I like to talk. 
Um, so, so if you have to just say, be shut up and I'll shut up. I don't take it personal. So, um, if it definitely, if we need to make a follow up or whatever, you just let me know. Um, and I'll try, like we'll say, we'll try to fit it in the schedule whenever we can.